Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, another in my series of heavy thoughts. This is where I take a moment to talk about some things that I've been thinking about that have been on my mind. So today's topic is lossless streaming. Is it the final frontier? And what I mean by that and kind of what it got me thinking about it is, you know, in a lot of the comment sections and the videos I make, people will often bring up the, how they listen to something. Like some people say, oh, I, I had that on 8-track or I've talked about cassettes on my channel. I talked about will there be a CD revival. And it seems like every, let's say, 10 years or so, there seems to be something new that comes along that, that, that sort of changes what people are listening to. You know, you started with records. You know, you had reel-to-reel -reel tapes too back then, but you had records. Eight tracks were sort of the first portable music for people that you could play in your car. Records hung around through the 80s. Cassettes showed up and got popular in the 80s. Then the 90s, records kind of went out of fashion. CDs came in. Then I would say in the 2000s, I'd maybe call that the MP3 uh, era. Then maybe the 2010s and then streaming showed up. And it got me thinking, like, what is really going to be after streaming? Now that we're looking at Spotify is going lossless, Amazon Music is lossless, Apple is going lossless, basically everybody's going lossless. And if you, if you don't know what that means is, is that uh, at this point, uh, most of the streaming services, not all of them, but most of them, like Spotify, stream in a compressed audio. Uh, Three for Spotify, if you have premium, you can go up to 328 kilobytes or whatever it is, KPS. So this is a compressed audio. Lossless is like CD. It's uh, uncompressed. There's nothing being taken out of the sound. So basically, for the most part, what you're getting with these lossless services is you're getting, you're getting CD quality. And some of them even offer above that, like I have Spotify and I also have Amazon Music HD because the Amazon Music HD offers high res audio, which a normal CD is I think 16 bit, 444.1 kilohertz. Uh, Amazon Music on certain albums and songs offers up to 24 bit, I think like 100 and something kilobytes. Some, some things like 94 is sort of the popular one you see 24 bit uh, 90 so that's above cd quality so it got me thinking like what it, you, in the evolution you see things moving towards more portability okay so eight tracks i mean even records were more portable and easier to handle convenience and portability so even records were easier to deal with than like a real to real machine right so from records, you went to 8-tracks. 8-tracks allowed people to, to, to play music in their car and little portable 8-track players. Then the next portable thing was the cassette. The cassette was smaller than the 8-track. Uh, the cassette Walkman, it was easier to store and move it around, play it in your car and play it in different places. You could record on the cassettes. Then you had uh, CDs which a little bit bigger than a cassette, so from the portability standpoint, but there was a sonic improvement. Now, I'm not gonna get into that argument. I've talked about the loudness wars and all that stuff, but from a purely spec standard, uh, the specs on a CD are better than a cassette, for instance. There's more frequency range, there's, there's way less noise, uh, so, uh, the, the CD is an improvement in the audio. Now, really after the CD, I mentioned high-res audio earlier, the 24-bit, 94 kilohertz sampling. There's people that will argue that above CD quality, 16-bit 441, that you really can't hear any difference unless you're on super high-end gear. I don't know, maybe. I think that I hear a difference. It's, that may be a topic of another video, but anyways. Uh, really with CD, with CDs, it was really kind of uh, the, the fidelity uh, was at the point where it had to, the potential to be really, really, really good. Now we've talked about the loudness wars and how they screw that up a lot. Check out that video. 
so after CDs then, then when MP3s came around, it was again a portability issue thing. Now you could have an iPod and you could put a thousand songs on it. As it got bigger, you could put more and more songs. And that was a real like revolutionary thing, right? You had this small thing and you could have all these albums and songs on it. <clears throat> well, now the step further is to convenience now with streaming. It, yeah, pretty much everybody has a phone. Now you can stream from your phone. <clears throat> you have pretty much everything at your fingertips. Once lossless audio is across all the platforms, there, there will not be an issue of sound quality. Uh, so it made me think, like, is, is this the final frontier? I mean, Amazon Music, you're not going to get any higher res files uh, anywhere else, really. I, so is, is this the final frontier? I mean, what could come after this? And it got me thinking and I thought, well, you know, maybe the, maybe the next step is going to be some sort of taking the streaming away from your phone. Like, uh, and you can, they're already starting to do this. That's why it made me think of this. The Apple Watch, for instance, you can now put Spotify on your Apple Watch and download onto your Apple Watch. So if you want to go out for a jog without your phone and you got your wireless headphones, you can stream uh, stuff you've downloaded onto your, to your Apple phone via Spotify using the Spotify app. So I thought, all right, that's probably going to be the next thing. It's like a standalone streaming player. And they already kind of have things like this, but... Imagine if you could have a watch or a wristband like this that has something in it and you've got all your streaming right there. It's in CD quality and above and it's all right there on your wrist. The other thing that they could do, and this I, I just thought of this myself, my son has some in-ear, really nice in-ear headphones. There's all these things you can do with them just by like tapping on it. And I thought maybe that there would be a way to have this streaming where it is literally in your earbuds and you can voice activate it where all you do is press on it and say, play ACDC's Back in Black or play my 80s synth <laughs> playlist or whatever. And it's and it's and it just does that. I mean, we're, we're sort of at that point with like, I, I, we have Amazon Alexa. I know there's other things like that too, where you can just say out loud, play, I'm not going to say it because it's going to trigger it in my room here, play ACDC Back in Black and it'll, it'll do it. So maybe that's the future. I mean, I can't really see anything from a sound quality per, thing getting better. 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. I, I, Above that is it, it seems pointless. It's above the specs that a human ear can hear, the highs and lows. So it's like we've sort of reached that point. And I mean, is is this the end? I, I don't really know what what could come after it. I could see some modifications to streaming, so that it becomes a little bit more convenient. Again, taking it away from your phone, maybe it becomes a standalone type player thing maybe there's things that are integrated into your it, it's already like this already with alexa and i think there's i forget what it's called sonos soros or something these like speakers you can have in your house where you just you just voice activate it and it just starts playing it uh so i don't know is is that the is that the final frontier uh you know for artists what what can they do to keep offering things that are going to be different? One thing that that's uh, stuck out to me was is there the thought that came to me. You see these things on YouTube, like where you can hear isolated tracks. Maybe that's going to be something where people start offering, like you 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 can download all the individual tracks from Pink Floyd's The Wall, and you can sit there and with a program. You, if you just want to listen to the bass track or you just want to listen to the vocal or you want to do your own mix of the record, you could mix the record yourself if you wanted to. I don't know. Maybe that's something that artists would think about. But I think as far as the medium, I don't really know where it could go from here because you pretty much have everything at your disposal now. Every, pretty much every song out there. Of course, there's not every single thing on streaming. But as time goes on, 
uh, more and more stuff is is on there it's it's in above cd quality at this point about as high a quality as you could get on certain services so i don't know what does the future hold what do you guys think uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, is is streaming the the end of the road here we've moved records eight tracks <clears throat> cassettes cds mp3s and now we're on streaming is what is going to be the future for consuming music or or is it here we're going to see where it's going to sort of end here and people are going to still there will always be people to listen to vinyl there'll still be people to buy cds but all right let me know down in the comments down below what do you guys think is this what's the future for consuming music is streaming the the uh the end of the road here uh let me know in the comments down below what you guys think and until we see you again make sure you stay heavy stay metal